Today on Let's Fish TV, join me, Brody Cooper, with Blasting Cast Men's Ministries. We're going to be on Upper Galveston Bay chasing redfish, and we're going to use a technique that I haven't seen on TV before, so I think it'll be new to you. Stick with us. I think you'll learn something. We're going to catch a bunch of different species out there. I think you'll enjoy today's show. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That's a big one right there. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. You ever caught a fish that big? No! <laughs> Got him. Now the day. Mm. There you go. Another redfish. Got, Got him it. now. That's what Let's Fish TV is all about right there, guys. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your guest host, Brody Cooper. Today we're on Upper Galveston Bay and we're gonna be chasing redfish with a technique that I haven't seen on TV before. Something a little different. We're gonna use square bill crankbaits and we're gonna focus on rocks and hard structure along shipping lanes and navigation channels. It's a fun technique. You'll catch a lot of different species of fish. I think you'll enjoy the show. We'll also have this week's fishing reports from your local region from our insider reporters. I'm gonna get this boat in the water and get our gear situated for today. While I do that, let's get started back at the studio with your weekend planner. Hi everybody, these Salooner tables are showing fair fishing conditions both days this weekend. Peak morning activity will start at 5.51 on Saturday and 6.41 Sunday morning. Prime daytime action picks up around 6.16 on Saturday and 7.05 late Sunday afternoon. Depending on your local area, expect the sun to rise around 6.31 and set around 8.38. Evenings will feature a moon that is 46% visible. Stay tuned for the latest fishing adventures and tips from Let's Fish TV by following us on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel. All right, today we are on Upper Galveston Bay. I'm gonna show you guys a, a technique I don't see a lot of people doing. I haven't seen it on TV before, but we're gonna be chasing redfish with square bill crankbaits. Uh, we've had a lot of fresh water coming through our system this year with rains and floods. And we had a storm surge about two weeks ago that pushed a fresh uh, slug of salt water up the, up the bay system and the redfish have come with it. So we're gonna be chasing those fish. They've been kind of scattered and we may have to grind them out, but they've all been good fish. No undersized fish, all good middle slot and upper slot redfish. Uh, but there have been some days when some schools move up on the shorelines and we hopefully we'll catch one of those days too. <laughs> gonna be a scorcher. Even the water's hot. There he is. Yeah, there had to be one in here. I'll try and get him on this side for you, but he's uh Good fish, it looks like a low to mid slot fish. He's angry. When you catch them on these square bills, a lot of times most of the fight is right next to the boat on a short leash. It's really easy to pull them off. So you just gotta loosen up that drag a lot so that as they get close, you can let them tire out and just give them a little time. I think I'll walk him up to the other side of the boat for you, Jared. And I'll go ahead and slip in the air on my net, and I'm gonna slip a net under him. He's not hooked all that great, so there we go. <laughs> all right, first fish of the morning. Didn't take long either. Ate it good on the on the uh, using a square build crankbait. We have a. Strike King KVD 1.5 and a, I don't know, it's a chartreuse kind of color. It's a great color for redfish. There you go. Look how orange that fish is. Orange and real pale. So this fish has probably been sitting in fresh water 
for a long time. Otherwise, he'd be a real deep copper and red color. That's why you grab him with a boga, <laughs> not your fingers. But you can see that square bow crankbait, and he's not even hooked in the mouth. And that's one of the things about that crankbait. If you're throwing a soft plastic and that fish hits it like that and just kind of reacts to it, you're probably not going to hook up. But that crankbait, I've got some 4X strong hooks on it. And you can see he's not even in the mouth. All I got was one barb. Fish is probably trying, not trying to eat the bait, just reacted to the bait. And uh, it was enough to keep him hooked up. The real key is when you see that bait, when you're reeling that fish in, you gotta back way off your drag. Let him take drag as he gets close. So we'll get this fish back in the water and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our technique. All right, so the reason we stopped where we did, just caught that fish, you can see over my shoulder, you see those birds, the cormorants right now stopping on the, they're just standing on the rocks. When we rolled up, there was a bunch of egrets, everything there. As you're going down all these shipping lanes, you'll just see miles and miles and miles of rocks. But when you pass a little section that's got 50 yards, 100 yards, and there's 20, 30 birds sitting there, there's a reason those birds are sitting there. They found some fish. So what I did is I eased in and dropped the power pole down right as I got in range. That fish did not eat on the first cast. I had to make four or five casts over top of that fish. I finally deflected it off a rock just right over top of him and he slapped at it and got it. So glad we got that first fish and hopefully we'll get another one for you in a minute. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you once again by the good folks at Athlon Optics. Athlon's proud to introduce their new thermal lineup of optics with the same great quality and same great prices as all the rest of their optics lineup. Athlon gives you the most bang for your buck. Now it's summertime and the kids want to go fishing. Let's get them out on the water. Let's go to Lake Athens and catch some bass. The reason we chose Athens, they school fairly reliably all over the lake on Athens during the hot summer months. Now you can catch these fish on top with your traditional top waters like your chug bug or your spooks or your poppers or your torpedoes. But if you have two or even three kids in the boat, that's a lot of treble hooks to be slinging around and be dodging for you, the guy that's gonna be taking those fish off the hook. So instead, let's use soft plastic jerk minnows. And we're gonna double down and have a lot of fun with a double rig. What you do is slide a barrel swivel on your main line and then tie another barrel swivel to the end of that main line. You're gonna take a leader of anywhere from 24 to 30 inches long and tie it to that main line swivel with a three aught or four aught hook. Then do a 20 to 24 inch leader on the sliding swivel. That'll give you a double rig, two baits, one cast every time you throw. And a lot of times in those schooling fish, you're gonna bring back two bass at a time. It's a ton of fun for the kids and you only have one or maybe two hooks to deal with. And since those are Texas rigged, it's a lot easier to get those fish off the line and get those kids on some fun. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. Be sure and check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. And the good Lord is liking us. We've got a gator in the background, pretty sunrise. <laughs> it's slicked off and picturesque. Nice fish, dude. Whole fish came out of the water. It's very, very, there he is. Feels like a really nice fish. He's just hooked funny. He's not that big, but a good one. They fight and fight and fight. He's not hooked good. You can see the whole bait. I'm gonna really play him. Come on. Play nice, play nice, play nice. Come on, get a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> That's another good fish. These fish are better than what I've been catching in here the last couple days. This is a, this is a fish that's right up against the, uh, the upper slot. In Texas, you have a slot limit that's between 20 and 28 inches long. And so you need those fish to fit a slot that's that big. Oh man. All right. Stop. That was a great fish. Another fish that's right there in the upper slot. He is uh, 
a little over seven pounds. So we'd have a decent tournament morning right now, Lisa. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Powerful Total Boat Control. Balls Out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on. Challenge your limits. All right. Now that is a fish. Another one. Really don't want him on the back of the boat with power pole and lower unit and trim tabs. I'd rather fight him on the front, but this fish really wants to be under the boat. Dude, he's a giant. I'll really try and play him out. Dude, that's a dinosaur. There's some moments in life you need a net man more than a cameraman. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he'll pop off of there, so I'll get you some good footage. All right, let me see if I can get a net under him. Oh. <laughs> Dude. Shot of the bait in his mouth, right there. <sighs> These square bills are fun to use. You're using them on a, I've got a 6.9 medium action rod. I want a lot of tip in that so that I don't pull hooks on big fish. And you hook a giant like this, this is probably a 30 pound black drum, 35 pound black drum. And you got a fight on your hands. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right. <sighs> That is a fish. How big? Matt Pangrak with the Bass Talk Live podcast here, and this is your weekly fishing report for the state of Oklahoma. It is the middle of summer. There are a lot of pleasure boats on the water, and this week we're going to go to a lake where you can get away from a little bit of the hustle and bustle and still have a chance to catch a lot of big bass, and that is Dripping Springs in East Central Oklahoma, a small trophy fish managed fishery, a lot of standing timber in there. If you haven't been there, I would recommend idling the entire time time even if you can't see it there's a lot of trees under the water but this time of year the midsummer and right now dripping springs is a great way to catch trophy largemouth on a 10 inch worm texas rigged on a 3 8 ounce bullet weight simply go to the standing timber along the channel edges you don't have to go far from the ramp if you're just idling and start pitching the worm to the vertical standing timber and those fish will let you know that they're there you can also go around the dam and throw a drop shot and a finesse rig around some of the brush piles hey for more information about bass fishing not only in the state of oklahoma but across the country check out the btl podcast every monday through thursday at 8 30 a.m central time on the btl youtube channel and on itunes to our left we got this uh geomat and you see this stuff a lot of times along channels and intercoastal waterways and uh usually it's the corps of engineers that puts that out to stop erosion but it has a soft edge as it slopes into the water and a lot of times you'll actually see the redfish or even flounder, sheephead, whatever, just cruising right along the edge of it, right under the surface of the water. Well, I'm hooked up. All right, I haven't seen him yet. I don't know what it is. But it feels redfishy. It is redfishy. Trying to get the boat under control. There we go. I 
All right. This is a nice, just an eating size redfish. It's probably about a 21 inch fish. And right at the lower end of the slot, it's the perfect eating size. The, the big ones are tougher, a little meatier. And so if you're looking for a box fish, this right here is what you want. Notice this fish is a little more orange and bright colored than some of the fish that um, I had earlier today. Some, sometimes when those fish are coming out of that murky fresh water that we had earlier this year, they'll get pretty dull and just kind of a dull gold. This, this fish has got good orange in his fins, nice bright colors. Probably has come up with the recent uh, push of salt water that we've had. He's been in a little bit clearer water on those rocks and thankful to get to catch him this morning. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lake Hartwell Country. Catch the feeling. Lose, feel the difference. Strike King, tie one on. And by Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. Stop pulling drag. There he is. Woo! Yep. He came back for it. He didn't eat it good. Smaller fish, but it's a red fish. All right. Good solid keeper fish here. There we go. That fish got it in the mouth, but he really didn't eat it good. Uh, I threw it up on the rocks and I thought I felt a fish swipe at it, but he didn't get it, kept reeling it. And what I felt was just something spongy. Uh, normally, the redfish come up behind that bait and they smoke it. You'll feel a thump and then your line goes slack and you, you know you're onto something. But when they're not eating real good, and I don't think they're eating great this morning, a lot of times that, that bait just slides off a rock and it feels funny. And what happens is that redfish has just kind of grabbed it nonchalantly and is swimming with you. If you feel that bait coming to you and you don't feel any wobble, take a few real fast turns and see if the rod loads up. If it does, set the hook. You got a fish. There's two different patterns that will work in the summertime. You can catch fish on these rocks literally all year round. You just have to have an incoming tide in the winter and the springtime. But in the summertime, what really makes these rocks magical is you got two different feed patterns that work. You got some fish that are chasing menhaden and they stay with those menhaden all year long and whatever, wherever the tide pushes them, that's where they're gonna be. And we've seen quite a bit of menhaden, pogies, whatever you wanna call them, getting pushed up to these walls. So those fish are pushed up, especially on an incoming tide. But the second thing you have going for you in the summertime are the fish that are eating crabs. And there's a ton of small crabs all through these rocks. And that's why you'll catch the black drum, the sheephead, and some of the other species in here on the crankbait because the beauty of that square bill crankbait is it imitates both the menhaden and the little crabs. That wide wobble in the water looks just like a little crab that is floating in the current. It's like candy to redfish. It's a really fun pattern. You can catch them, whatever they're doing, whatever they're feeding on, you can throw this bait. Just switch up your color a little bit based on what you're seeing most. That's a good redfish. I gotta get away from the rocks though. Oh, that's a good fish, really good fish and he chewed it all the way down in his mouth. Whew. Stop pulling drag. There he is. Whew. Guys, it has been a day. It's about 100 degrees out here and I'm tired. And look at that bait. <laughs> Can't even see it in there because he chewed it. I hope that you'll take a moment to learn a little bit more about Blast and Cast Men's Ministries. We're an interdenominational missions organization. Our focus is pointing outdoorsmen to the cross. We've got five chapters in Texas right now, one in New Mexico, one in Louisiana, one in Florida, a couple of events in Colorado. Come out and join us for an event sometime. You can learn more at blastingcast.org. Follow us at our social media profiles. And if we can ever help you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out.
Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach Tourism, Let's Fish on Alabama's beaches, Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. All right, guys, let me show you a little bit about the gear that I'm using, tackle, all that stuff. I'm using a six foot nine medium action rod. It has a really soft tip on it, and you really need that with a big red fish because when they make those head shakes and long runs, especially when they're next to the boat and they react to you, you need a rod that's going to give with it, give your reel a little bit of time to catch up and strip drag. I'm using 30 pound braid on a loose speed spool with a 7.5 to 1 retrieve ratio. It's really important to have a fast retrieve ratio on this reel and this speed spool is really fast. And the reason you need that is the redfish are fast. They're not like bass where they're just kind of slow and you hook up. You need to catch up to that fish. A lot of the times when you hook a redfish, he's coming straight at the boat and if you don't keep up with him, you're going to end up losing that fish or he'll get under the boat and cut you off, things like that. You should see it. I'm also using 30 pound braid. I don't like using fluorocarbon, which is common in the bass world. There's too many barnacles, uh, abrasive stuff under the water. And if I do backlash or if I have, if I need to let my boat, my baits uh, sit there, I need the line to float on top of the water. If it sinks, it's going to get down there and all those barnacles, I'm going to end up cutting it off. The square bill that we're using today is a Strike King bait. And I've got three of them new in package so that you can see exactly what the package looks like. You can pick these up at any Academy Sports and Outdoors, or you can go online to Academy Sports and Outdoors and get these. It's a very simple bait. It's just a square bill crankbait. It's a Strike King KBD 1.5. That's the size that I use the most. I do recommend that you replace the hooks on it. And I'm using a, a VMC 9626, which is a 4X strong short shank treble hook. And I just replaced those factory hooks to make sure that the redfish can't straighten them out on me. Uh, color is not really that important with redfish. Usually if they're going to eat it, they're going to eat it. So I've got three choices that I picked up and I'm going to show these to you. And hopefully you can see them on camera good. <laughs> if I don't drop them everywhere. And I basically, and I started this morning with just this chartreuse color, chartreuse black back. It'll work in just about any water color, but I especially like it if it's stained water. Uh, sexy shad is always, I mean, it's just a classic choice. It looks like any shad out there in the water. In good clear water, a lot of times I'll throw that sexy shad or any shad colored bait. And the other one is just a crawfish color. That red really shows up well in muddy water. So if it's really muddy, and if, especially if you think those redfish are really keyed in on crabs, throw the crawfish colored crankbait. I don't think they know the difference between a crawfish and a crab, and it works good. Also, this is a 1.5 hard knock. It really doesn't matter if your square bill crankbait has a rattle or not for redfish. I don't think it matters. I've never noticed a difference. Uh, if the water's really muddy, I want the rattle because it makes me more confident in the bait but I'm still not sure it makes a difference. So use what you got. Um, I, I like the baits with a rattle. I think they can come find the bait a little easier. Uh, but if you just stick to basic colors like this, any kind of a shad color, something with chartreuse, if you can find something with gold, it's gonna work. Don't overthink it. Uh, you wanna get that cast right up next to the rocks because that's where the redfish are. Guys, I wanna thank Andrew for asking me to guest host this episode. It's been a lot of fun today on Upper Galveston Bay catching redfish. I hope you learned something with me.